Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be doing my A4 Fantasy review of the Collingwood vs Richmond game. So before we get into it, remember to like and subscribe as more videos will be coming up in the near future as I have this review and then I've got my Collingwood Ruck review as I'll do it in more depth. So hopefully this one will be a little bit shorter. So, um, let's get into the video. So, of course, here we've got the Jordan Dugowie outscored everyone. Well, he scored 120 in the end. Um, yeah, did brilliantly. Um, I've been really surprised at the way he's gone about it. He had a huge last quarter of 50. Like, I thought he was just going to go for another 90-95. Um, so, we had what in the end? 1, 2, uh, one, two 3, 4, 5, 6... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 disposals in the last quarter. Really, really good from him. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that I did say in the end that he wasn't going to be a good pick because he's had two out of three good games. Um, you probably want to see one more good game out of him um, because he didn't even kick well this game. I think he kicked zero goals three. If he has a good game, he's going to score 130, 140 like with the way he's going at the moment. One note is that he did have 91% time on ground, which was a little bit up from his previous of 79 and 84, I think, in the previous two rounds. So if he gets that 91 again, I might jump on him because he's got that time on ground increased. He's got the tackles and um, marks that I really wanted out of him that I th thought that he couldn't actually get, which um, is why I didn't think that he was a good option in the first place. So he's got that, and he's getting the disposals that I need as well. So he's really looking good. I just don't... I want to see another good game of him before I jump on him because um, if we look at Dacos, because he has the same fixtures, obviously. Um, they played um, Richmond. They've got the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba. Then they have this really nice run. So if I can get him in, then I think he'll do really well. Um, that's not the right screen. Here we go. Dacos and Mitchell, yep. Really, really good numbers from them. Um, Dacos, not the best second half, but, um, you know, he can easily pick it up, I guess. And it looks like they did put a little bit of time into him, even though Hubwick said that he didn't. They put a little bit of time into him. Um, they won't have... I don't think that Dacos will have a tag against him in Brisbane, so he should do really, really well against them. Josh Dacos, um, really, really good for him. A little bit disappointing in the last quarter, but... I mean, if he's putting up 90s each week, he I don't think... He'd be a nice unique if he was scoring 10 more, put it like that. But he's just topping out at 90, and I don't know if he has the ability to go um, higher than that, which sort of sucks, but he's pretty good at the moment. Then you have Sidebottom, Elliot, McStay. Didn't do anything basically to the last quarter, and he's a guy that I think I'm going to be debating the whole week through with some people on, um, with some people in fantasy, whether he's actually going to be good or not. And um, but, um, you know, him ended up scoring 77. He's going to have a re a pretty good break even, I think. Like if we look at mixed day here at 511k, he drops. Um, well, he has 41.53. So after next round, he's going to probably have a 70. He'll probably have the same break even, actually, now looking at it. Um, so he'll have that break even there. Um, I want to look at the Ruck contest, and you'll see here that McStay ended up with 28. And he had 14% um, hit outs, which is probably not the best. I mean... If he has 14% hit outs and he has um, the likes of um, and he has the likes of a full game and he has something like 60 or 70 um, ruck contests, 70 times 0.14 is 9.8. That's um, but he did. You do have to point out that he did come up against a pretty dominant ruck. If we look at um, where is Richmond? Do, 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 Richmond here, 2023. Um, Nankervis is hitting out at 50%, give or take, and that's pretty huge. Whereas if you look at the likes of, um, I don't know, even Port Adelaide, um, Scott Lysett hits out at 34%. So um, if we look at A4 Fantasy, who do, they, who do I say they have next week? They have um, Brisbane um, next week. 
So um, I should actually probably go into this in the next video that I'm going to do. So I'll leave that. I'll leave you guys on a cliffhanger, I guess, with um, my view, etc. of those guys. So you have Crisp was pretty disappointing. Mayacek did really well, even though I think he got a, a knock on the head and had blood. So um, he did pretty well for that. Um, <clears throat> Crisp was pretty disappointing, especially second half. He only had 29 in the second half, so he's on 47 and a half. Maynard McCreary, I thought, really for the game that he had in terms of um, um, just effectiveness was really good. Ash Johnson did really well for effectiveness, just didn't hit the scoreboard in the last quarter, so really didn't help him. Adams looked really good early, but then faded very, very quickly here. He was on 10 after like 8 minutes and looked really, really impactful, but then sort of faded away, especially in the second half here. 19 in the second really didn't help him after a 40-point first. Um, then you have Darcy Cameron getting injured for 6 to 8 weeks at the end of the third quarter, so that really sucks for anyone who went. I've seen a lot of people go on Sherry to go on to Cameron, and now... Who will they go for? Please do not go for Marshall or Wits, please, because it seems like you've, uh, you're have you pretty cursed at the moment. And then no one else really impactful from Collingwood. So now we move on to Richmond, and um, if you want an answer to Cameron, you probably should go um, Nane Curvis. I mean, he is going to go up 40k and be 840k, but the way he dominates at the moment, especially hitouts-wise, like... He's having, what did he have in the end? Something like 40, 39 hitouts in the end. And he could have easily probably had a good um, 10, 15 more hitouts, to be honest with you. And he's just able to make up a lot of the time, a lot of the um, points through um, a lot of disposals. If we look at here, he ended up having 20 disposals and 7 tackles. I mean, if he's going to average that throughout the game, that's pretty good. And then Taranto 111. He wasn't effective with the ball, but we don't need that in AFL Fantasy, so that's pretty good. 111. And then Baker 110 as well was pretty pretty good. I mean, I just don't know if I can trust him. I mean, we'd probably need another week of him doing well because he did put up, uh, if we go over to here and go over to Baker, um, we look over here. He did put up in the end... Uh, a 55 round one so I probably want to see another good good round of him because he is going to have a really good break even next round I mean what's his break even this round was the 62 so he's going to go up to 650k and that'll be um pretty good for him and I want to see another round of him before I get out of um maybe he's the get out of Duggan and then I move um Chandler to the likes of a uh, of the to the likes of a mixed day or something like that, and that's my moves or something. That it could be an option. So, um, Daniel Rioli looked all right. Jack Ross, um, really good in the first and third, and Prestia just was pretty good. And then, yeah, nothing else really to talk about, especially in this out of the um, Richmond. And then you have Samson Ryan, who got subbed off at half, and then Cumberland came in and... He looked actually really good, um, but just didn't get, I guess, the the um, the range that we wanted out of him, and only got 23, so he's going to decrease in price massively. Sucks for Ryan, because he's only got um, plus 12 on his break-even, so that will mean, and his break-even next game is going to be pretty... It, his break-even next game is probably going to be somewhere around that... Um, 20 or so range I think so that kind of sucks we kind of ruined his break even um but you know for him to get another 10k cash or so is just um sort of cash that you know you might need down the line so that's pretty good um and then yeah people in the chat here are wondering who will ruck for Collingwood next week and uh we won't know honestly for a little while um so that's my review of the Collingwood versus uh, Richmond game and hopefully this gets uploaded pretty soon from when I actually recorded it, so it comes out before the games. And yeah, hopefully I can get out a um, Collingwood um, ruck um, debate or who's going to be actually rucking pretty soon as well on the Saturday. So I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.